This is a very short video that simply explains the difference between jQuery AJAX, jQuery GET, and jQuery POST. Let's start off by taking a quick look at the two files that I've created here. On our local web server, there's a file called index.html, and that file simply has a very basic bare bones web page in which we pull in jQuery, which we'll need. There's a little bit of CSS going on at the top, nothing to really talk about. And then there's just simply one element in the body. It's a section element with the ID of container. And you can see that container is completely empty. So there's essentially no content in our page. The second file I created, which is latin.html, is just simply a HTML file with a little bit of markup. It's not even a fully formed web page. It's just a div with some, an H1 and a P, which is basically our, our sample content. So let's look at the actual web page. And if we do, we'll see that it is empty. And if we inspect it, you'll see once again that we've got our section element with the ID of container, and that element is empty. So let's go ahead and fire up the first one, which is uh, jQuery get. And you'll notice that jQuery get takes three arguments. The first one is the URL of the page we want to AJAX in, in this case, it's latin.html. The second argument is a success callback, which we use to do something with the content that we get back. That argument is optional. I don't know how much use you get out of a jQuery get call without a success callback, but that's up to you. The third argument uh, just indicates we want to treat this as text. So let's go ahead and run that jQuery get, and you can see that we AJAXed our content in. And if we look at this call in the console, we'll see that this is the HTML that came back from our AJAX call. In fact, you can look at a preview of the content, which looks suspiciously like the content in the page. And if we inspect the page, we can see that this section element is no longer empty. It's got a div inside of it with some more markup, and basically we AJAX the content in. So pretty straightforward and simple stuff. Now, the next method is the jQuery post method, which is virtually identical to the jQuery get method. It still takes the same three arguments, the URL of the page you want to call in, the success handler right here, and the indicating that it's a type of text. And once again, here in a success handler, we get a, a, a reference to the section element with the ID of container. We use the HTML method to shove the content that we got from the success callback right here into that element. And the only difference here is that the name of the method is post and it just tells jQuery, hey, I want to make an Ajax call, but this one's going to be a type of post, not a type of get. So let's run it and see what happens. We run it, and the exact same thing happens. And I won't even go to the details, the exact same results. We made an Ajax call, we got the content in our success handler, and we shoved that content into the container element. And again, the only difference is we specified that it's going to be a type post and not a type get by using the post method. Now we can take a look at the jQuery AJAX method. The jQuery AJAX method is a little more general than the get and post methods. You could say that the get and post methods are shortcuts to the jQuery AJAX method. Because with the jQuery AJAX method, instead of passing it those three arguments, you pass it an object. And this object has a number of properties. One of the properties is the URL of the page that we want to AJAX in. Once again, latin.html. Another property is the data type. There's our text type that we indicated before. The next is the type of request it will be. In this case, it will be a post, but I could very easily make this a get. And then we've got our success handler. In fact, the name of the property is success, and it's just assigned to an anonymous function. And when that AJAX call succeeds, it calls this function and passes the content that we got from our AJAX call in this case, once again, we get a handle to the element with the ID of container and shove that content in. So the biggest difference is that the jQuery AJAX method, it's more general and it needs to know some things. We pass it an object and the properties of that object tell the jQuery AJAX method more about what we want to do. So let's run the jQuery AJAX method and see what happens. And the exact same thing happened. We AJAX the content in. This one was a post. It could have been a get, but by using the jQuery AJAX method, we provided an object with a bunch of properties and gave some specifics about this particular request. We could have changed the data type to JSON. We could have made the type 
get. In fact, we could also provide a failure handler. There's a lot more detail you could get into, but on a very high level, this is the main differences between the jQuery AJAX, jQuery GET, and jQuery POST methods.